Davis and not Owen. Oh, just look at that. Off balance going to the right. Doesn't matter if everyone knows whose hands it's supposed to be. Caitlin Clark has the basketball world in shock. That is unquestionable. And while I don't expect only admiration for the future superstar, there are people who are showing a skepticism that makes absolutely no sense. Her absurd shot selection coupled with her dominance has made her one of the most famous athletes in world basketball. And she hasn't even gone pro yet. And although this has allowed her to be conceived as a player with generational potential, her own professional peers seem to have a different opinion. Remember what the Cavaliers players were saying before they drafted LeBron? Let me refresh your memory. We have better players than him in his position already on our team, bro. Um, his potential is probably the sky's the limit for him, though. Good LeBron is just gonna add, add to what we need and you know, just make, make things a little bit easier. Well, I think something similar might be going on with Caitlin Clark, but on an even larger scale. It's not like a team of envious people are hating on one of the best prospects in sports history because she's gonna take the spotlight away from them. An entire league is doing it. But in the end, this is just a natural part of the maturation process of a player who will likely mark a before and after in the best professional women's basketball league. I think pretty much everyone heard about what happened just a few days ago in Cleveland. The final between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the South Carolina Gamecocks was the most watched women's basketball game ever, with almost 19 million average viewers and a peak of 24.1 million during the last 15 minutes of the game. And although Caitlin once again fell just short of the NCAA championship, losing to a team that had a perfect season, her attractive play style put women's sports back in the spotlight like never before. Now, do you know what the player who many people consider the GOAT of the WNBA had to say about it? Well, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's yes. levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. It, and you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. Now, for those who don't follow the WNBA, Tarasi is a legend. Her longevity and ability to score from anywhere wreaked havoc on the league for years. And from her position of NBA royalty, instead of challenging Clark to be an immediate impact player, she dismissed that she might have any chance of making it at all. Now, is it out of fear of being forgotten? Is it out of pure envy? That's a good question. Tarasi has not been the first to say that it seems that the efforts that all the players have been making for decades pushing the WNBA and its recognition are being minimized by this new trend. And maybe that's what motivated her to say that this was a terrible call. Yes, that foul that benefited Iowa and was a textbook moving screen, according to Tarasi, was a terrible call. Given, look, I get there, there's objectivity, but given the uniform you all wore, and I, I'm going to start the same place I just started with Andrea. I don't know how you make that call with 3.9 on a one-point game. I'm just curious your thoughts on that. I, I believe I said it in, in different worlds. That's a terrible call. The opinion of legends and former players became even more polarized when this happened. The Big Three, a professional three-on-three -three league created by Ice Cube, has made an unthinkable offer to the former Iowa player. $5 million to participate in a league that is normally populated by former players who have played in the NBA. An offer, by the way, that would allow Caitlin to earn 20 times the maximum salary of the WNBA in a very different format. And no, I'm not exaggerating. $5 million is 20 times the league's maximum salary of $242,000 per year. And when this news came out, legends like Lexi Brown had this to say. You offered the contract to a player who's not yet even in the WNBA. Mm. Big three does not happen during overseas season. So that, that doesn't make sense. That's true. And then um, for us to get like just constantly shit on, like you can't even acknowledge the growth and how amazing the WNBA is, is doing because shit like this happens. Her argument, beyond some envy for a woman who's blazing a trail for the next generation, is that, quote, shit like that 
is what causes the WNBA to not be able to explode? I mean, according to Brown, Clark getting the pocket $5 million and make record earnings for a female athlete is a bad thing? Beyond the fact that Ice Cube's offer is a completely understandable business decision that would incredibly boost the league's ratings, it seems like all the former players have to show their opinion about it. A player who went on to win the NCAA championship four times, Brianna Stewart, had this to say a few days ago, quote, yeah, she does need to win a title to be considered one of the greats. I think so, because then you're going to look 10 years back and you're going to see all the records she's broken and the points and stuff like that. But anybody knows your goal when you play college basketball is to win a national championship. So you need one. Now, Stewart's legend is huge in college basketball, to the point that many people consider her the greatest player in women's NCAA history. However, far from showing her admiration for what Clark was being able to accomplish, she belittled her accomplishments because she wasn't able to win any NCAA championships. It's completely surreal. Even worse, though, is our next example. Cheryl Swoops, three-time MVP, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, and four-time WNBA champion, had this to say about the NCAA scoring record that Caitlin Clark had just broken. If it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. I mean, after hearing these statements, well, I don't know where to start. First of all, everyone knows that Caitlin did not play five seasons in the NCAA. She played four, which is the standard for all players to complete the college cycle. And she also needed less games than her competition. And not only that, but Cheryl says that Clark is able to dominate in college because she's five years older than her competition, something that couldn't be further from the truth. Not only did Caitlin turn 22 this past January, but as an 18-year-old, she was able to average 26.6 points, 5.9 rebounds, and 7.1 assists with over 40% from three-point range in Division I. Clark has been dominating the NCAA since she arrived, even when she was much younger than the average age of college basketball. I mean, this take was so stupid that people were quick to disagree, and the former WNBA MVP had to come out to clarify her words with a take in which she only argued that it was not a race issue. She didn't say anything about her lies. I, I'm gonna say this, and then I wanna like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like first of all, black people can't be racist, but like that's the farthest thing from my mind. I mean, I get it. It can be easy to see everything you've done for women's sports being downplayed by a young generational star. In a way, it's kind of unfair, but instead of supporting Clark to make this momentum become a standard for women's sports, they seem to be doing the opposite. You know what's actually funnier though? NBA players have a completely different opinion about all this. Here's what Shaquille O'Neal, considered by many fans to be one of the most dominant players in league history, had to say about Caitlin Clark's performance. Apparently you are. <laughs> yeah, but she's incredible. Congratulations incredible. to her and her family. Yeah. Like, I, I, the crazy thing is I'm, I'm just seeing her last year when they uh, uh, played LSU, but she, she's phenomenal. I, I'm gonna go on the record and say she's the best female collegiate player ever. I don't think those statements were very funny to Brianna Stewart. But that's the reality for Shaq. True or not, the former center supported the growth of women's basketball and made it clear that the WNBA could not pass up this opportunity. Stephen Curry has always been an exceptional spokesperson for basketball and has always been involved in women's sports too. The fact that he agreed to participate in the three-point contest with Sabrina Ionescu during the last All-Star game proves it. An event in which the best shooter in history had a lot to lose and not much to gain. And well, about Clark, his opinion was clear. I saw somebody break down the release time, which is pretty much identical to mine. Uh, and then her just confidence. I, you, you can't help but watch when she plays, where she's shooting from, the range, the confidence, the flair. Like, she's a performer. Um, it's crazy, though, just because... Her shot is its like that, it's at that level. Instead of minimizing the comparisons to her, Curry praised her ability to shoot from anywhere on the court, fueling this comparison. 
Meanwhile, Luka Doncic, one of the NBA's most visible faces, had this to say about the Iowa player. Uh, amazing. Uh, I saw this one. It's at 41. Yeah. Almost triple though, yeah. Uh, he was shooting a little bit. That ball fly. Yeah. I watched a little bit. Uh, but then I had to do some shooting. So. But it was amazing. I watched the first half. She, but she got to go in the second half, so I didn't watch that. <laughs> Does she remind you of you at all? I mean, she's kind of got that. She, she's got a... And it's more Steph Curry. Right? Okay. So when was Steph Curry? Okay. All right. The man literally said that Caitlin shoots better than him. He was shooting later that, that ball fly. Uh, I watched a little bit, uh, but then I had to do some treatment. So, But it was amazing. I watched the first half. Uh, but she got to go in the second half, so I didn't watch that. And it's more Steph Curry, man. Or LeBron James, one of the NBA's top GOAT candidates, who during the NCAA Women's Championship final posted this on his social media. Even Stephen A. Smith, one of the most critical journalists in the basketball world, had time to show his opinion about the Hawkeyes guard on his program. I ain't seen no woman in, in, in college basketball that shoots like Caitlin Clark. I ain't seen it. Now, you know that's cool? I love what she did All-Star Weekend, and she tied all the men outside of Steph Curry. Okay, I did 26. I mean, she was great. She was great. She was great. But I ain't never seen any woman yeah. in college basketball, okay. shoot the basketball like Caitlin Clark. Right. But why is this happening? Why are NBA players able to show their admiration for Clark and realize what she can do for women's sports, but WNBA players or former WNBA players are unable to recognize her greatness and potential? Well, the answer might be simpler than it seems. You see, the NBA is a league with a lot of history a more mature product that has gone through numerous eras and dominated by many players over time. This generational replacement is something NBA players are used to and have seen happen since they were young. MJ, Shaq, Kobe, LeBron, even Wembenyama today, they're all players whose greatness has influenced the evolution of the game and whose hype served to maintain their momentum for years and push the league even further. In short, they know what the arrival of a generational prospect means, and they're able to appreciate it. Meanwhile, the WNBA is a much newer product and hasn't finished exploding yet. Players are used to seeing game-changing athletes in the NBA, but they're not used to a player being able to change the sport on her own. Caitlin Clark's influence is unrivaled in the history of women's sports, and the opportunity she has to make the WNBA explode may be unique in history. While some women athletes have been able to grasp it and appreciate what the Iowa Guard may end up doing for women's sports, others have yet to realize it or can't bring themselves to admit it. But rest assured, time will prove that Clark is a generational talent capable of elevating the entire sport with her power and changing the game forever. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know down in the comments, like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.